GLC is now offering a free audio stream of our 24-7 broadcast that we're calling GLC Radio, an online radio station that broadcasts our round-the-clock audio stream on a variety of platforms. GLC Radio gives you the ability to listen to GLC virtually anywhere, through your home or office computer, or on the go with a mobile device. You can access GLC Radio through our website or by searching for God's Learning Channel through iTunes Internet Radio, TuneInRadio.com, or on Shoutcast.com. Explore various GLC Radio-enabled mobile apps by visiting our website at glc.us.com forward slash listen forward slash GLC Radio. GLC Radio, your free connection to GLC anywhere, anytime. Well, welcome to this Monday's update, a beginning of another week. Another month. It, it is, is another month. Isn't Happy it? August. Yeah, really. <laughs> I said just before we went on here, oh my goodness, another hour has passed. Every time I look at my watch, another hour has gone by. Wow, well, every time I look at mom's watch, I don't wear a watch. <laughs> Now you can say another week, another month. It'd yeah. make me crazy. Okay, we have a few announcements. Do. you want to start with the Lauren Davis announcement, Mother? Oh, well, we were very surprised to get word last week that our friend Lauren Davis, whom you know from his appearance here many times, he's been a missionary in Africa. He and his wife Celeste for many years and uh, uh, got word of, his death last week and uh, so we we celebrate his life that's, that's for right. sure and mm. uh, um, our condolences go to Celeste and all the family they have children and grandchildren and so okay I got a very 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 shocking report mm -hmm. from our precious Jean-Claude Chalvam and hopefully his little French boots. There mm -hmm. he is on screen. Uh, Jean-Claude's birthday was last Thursday. Friday morning, he went to breakfast with a friend and left a pot on under on a fire on the that he didn't turn off. And his home burned to the ground. He lost absolutely everything. So not only do we need you to be really praying for Jean-Claude because you can imagine how trying this is for him. But I tell you, I, I talked to him yesterday, probably for, I know, well over half an hour. His spirits are good. And he knows that God has a plan in this because he he realizes, as he calls him, daddy is in charge. And it truly he, is. he's like, I just need to know for sure what it is he's, he's trying to convey to me here. And he thinks it probably has more to do with direction than anything else. But I'm, didn't face his faith at all. In fact, of course not. Uh, amazingly enough, it has been people he knows in Las Vegas, primarily the non-saved people, the non non Christians, who've really stepped up to the plate to to help him. That's wonderful. It is wonderful, and that's because he acts like a Christian. That's right. He loves people. That's right. And so they've, they've been there to help him, but I'm telling you, he lost everything and he does need help. So we are accepting donations on his behalf. I guarantee you, he's a very dear friend of ours. That money mm -hmm. will go quickly to him. Yes. We get mm -hmm. it, it goes to him. And you can donate any way you want. You can send in checks, you can call the bookstore, the office, we'll take your credit card information, process that, or you can donate online. But do bear in mind that even though we're accepting donations for him, this is not a tax deductible donation. Right. It's just what we're doing for him. It's just a love gift. It's a love gift. That's right. That's right. And all I can say is picture yourself in those shoes, having lost everything except the shirt on your back, literally. Mm -hmm. The only thing other than the shirt on his back that was spared was his laptop. And that is only because he had put it in the shop three days before. <laughs> so anyway, be praying for him that uh, he really hears God in this too mm -hmm. and what God is wanting him to do. He's really seeking the Lord for some direction and he has been for about, well, all of his life, but really seriously for the past three months on very specific moves on what he's to be doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had a very enjoyable morning. 
Cowboy Dan was in the house. It's the first time I've ever interviewed him for Light of the Southwest. That will be airing tonight. Really? And you'll learn all about Cowboy Dan's life. We actually did two separate hours so that I can air those at different times, but we'll air them back to back tonight. And the first hour is about his life and his personal life, mm -hmm. more or less. Mm -hmm. And then the second hour is really about the importance of what he does with the kids ministry mm -hmm. that you know what he didn't even know that God had called him into it it's just just kind of happened and that's because of the beef industry of all things <laughs> so okay anyway so we'll watch for that it'll be great it'll yeah. be great I hope you guys enjoy it as much as we did <laughs> Papa son have you a letter I got a letter it says dear friends <clears throat> we are extremely blessed with our nice weather this summer Please agree with me that it will continue. I heard Tommy say last night on the update program to send in our $1,000. So here it is with our blessings. Thank you for your prayers. We are very blessed by Teresa. What's her last name? Richenberger. I can't say that. On a recent lots. <laughs> Keep the good news coming. I know some folks who are watching you from Clayton, New Mexico. Sincerely in Jesus, Kenna from Fortalis. I'd love to know how they're watching from Clayton because one cable company pulled out of there and and we're well, trying to pre You never know, they might be watching on Galaxy 19. Mm -hmm. They well, might there be are some watching on 19. I, we've heard from them. There's lots of people watching us on the internet as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So who knows? Let me show you about the what's going on. If you've been keeping up with us on our countdown and I want to thank you people who have been sending in your $50. A lot of them came in today. On the next program, I'll give you an update. But there it is. We have 27 cable systems to convert, and only 54. We've converted uh, 23 no. and 54. No. no, 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 we have 77 to convert. What did I say, 27? 27. 27. Mm -hmm. 77 to do it, <laughs> but 23 of them have been converted, and there's 54 to go. Exactly. Okay. Wonderful. So, it is. Yep, that is. Hey, um, for all you folks over anywhere near the Dallas area, you know that wonderful Bible lady? Her name is Donna Greenberg <laughs> and the Messianic Jewish Family Bible that was recently published. Mm -hmm. She's having her first ever, uh, it's actually a celebration conference in Dallas on Friday. Mm. So... I'm pretty sure you, you might have to register for that, so you'd need to go online and register for that if there's any space left. Um, but you'll want to go check that out. They'll have lots of speakers there, including uh, Dr. Jeffrey Seif. And me and, and the crew. Jack Hayford. Me and the crew are going to be there filming some of mm -hmm. it so that maybe at some point we can share some of it with I you. Hope so. Right, Jack Hayford is going to be mm -hmm. there. He has been a... Uh, Christian who has been very much behind the Messianic Jewish movement mm -hmm. as well as that family Bible project. Right. So, in fact, um, he footed the bill for the conference. Wow, bless his heart. I think, I think that's correct. <laughs> if he didn't that's foot awesome. all of it, he footed a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to finally getting to meet that oh, man. Yeah. Been seeing him around since, oh, the 80s. That's since I've been seeing him around. Mm -hmm. I know he's been around longer he's been than that. He's been around longer than mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. He's a wonderful man. Very well respected by members of various communities. That's right. Which is what's so phenomenal. That's right. You know. What well, about you, Mom? Do well, you have a devotion today? I do, and it's from Bill Wilson today uh, of the Daily Jot. And he says, on January 18th, 2002, <gasps> when I wrote the first Daily Jot, there were maybe one or two prophetic-related events a month. Over the years, these events increased to perhaps one a week, then several a week, then one a day, and now sometimes so many, it's difficult to pick which to write about. Irrespective of your eschatology, it's difficult to, to deny that we are living in an exciting prophetic time. Hardly dinner table conversation in 2002, today the conversation doesn't even have to drift to the biblical significance of the day's events at our dinner table with family or friends, it gets there naturally and sometimes very quickly. I believe beyond a doubt that we are watching biblical prophecies take shape. 
from the caliphate in the Middle East to the U.S. president as a catalyst to Islamic dominance, it's not difficult now to see how the epic end time battle of Ezekiel 38 takes shape and waits suspended for the Lord to set it in motion. World powers such as the United States under the leadership of godless men and women are shifting. They are abandoning traditional roles of standing in the breach for Israel and for holding the violent Islamic aggression at bay. Instead, they've taken the approach of engagement, abiding, aiding and abetting, tolerance and allowance of this aggression to be played out by the hands of brutal men who give new meaning to the contemporary definition of the word terrorist. The church is divided as much on doctrine as it is on who is Jesus Christ. Self-indulgence, emotionalism, extra-biblical, even non-biblical teaching has replaced sound doctrine in much of the church. Discussions on doctrine and theology often are now argued in terms of who wrote what book that's currently popular instead of the context of the Word of God. This is 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4 playing out. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. This opens the door to great deception. I cannot urge you enough to study the word of God on your own. Teachers, preachers, and others who self-proclaim their church offices will not stand in your place before the Lord on Judgment Day. It will be you and you alone. You won't be able to quote passages from so, some so-called Bible teachers in your defense. It will be about your relationship with the Lord. With the exponential increase in the events that can be related to prophecy and the desire of the masses to change after the newest opinion on Scripture, I now have a fuller understanding of what Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians 2.12, to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Mm. Read the word in its context. Mm. Get close to Jesus. We are living in prophetic times. Wow. That's a wow wow. Yeah, that, that's what I've been wanting to say. <laughs> and there, I said it. <laughs> you know, one of the things that's very scary about that scripture that that you quoted within that mm -hmm. that for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables it's so easy to read that scripture and parlay that on to someone else. Mm -hmm. They will be, yes. they will be, they will be. And I worry about that. Right. Because this is, this is a thing where we must check our, check our own fruit. Because what if you're one of those who doesn't realize that what you're listening to is not sound doctrine, but it sounds good to you and so you're running and you're doing mm -hmm. whatever you're being told by some teacher. Mm -hmm. And there are many teachers out there and I don't care what they're calling themselves. They're not teaching sound doctrine and they answer to no one. Do not follow these people. Mm -hmm. These are the people who, you know, God's not gonna count them guilty on your behalf. Well, he will, but they'll pay the price for that. But you're still guilty. That's right. That's why it's absolutely critical you read the word for yourself and, and don't depend on the opinions of other people. Okay, well, it's not, just, it's not just reading the word for yourself, though, because, you know, I've known a lot of teachers who read the word, some who can quote it like that, and they are so off base, it's not even funny. I've seen those too, yeah. The problem is, is that they answer to no one, and they haven't been taught by someone who was theologically sound in the first mm -hmm. place. They might have been taught by someone who was 
just self-taught and mm -hmm. it sounded really good and mm -hmm. I can quote things really fast. So mm -hmm. please be careful. Yes. That's all I'm telling you. Just please yeah. be careful. Okay. So what is this? Something about a poll. Ooh, Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> Two new polls indicate that Americans are displeased with President Barack Obama's recent nuclear deal with Iran. Even as Secretary of State John Kerry pushes the deal on the public and opposing lawmakers look for ways out. A new CNN poll has found that a majority of Americans, 52%, think Congress should reject the deal. Among them is Southern Evangelical Seminary President, Dr. Richard Land, who says the deal shakes hands with evil, will further the apocalyptic ideology of the Islamic State in the Middle East, and makes the use of nuclear weapons far more likely rather than less likely in the future. Dr. Land uh, talked about the Iran deal in two recent installments of his daily radio feature, Bringing Every Thought Captive and that was on Thursday and Friday of last week, stating that facts in an editorial in USA Today astounded him and should be alarming to every American. According to the piece by Elon Berman, vice president of the American Foreign Policy Council and author of the upcoming book, Iran's Deadly Ambition, The Islamic Republic's Quest for Global Power, Buried in more than 150 pages of technical details that comprise the newly inked deal with Iran is the fact that later this year or early in 2016, America and other nations will begin turning over more than $100 billion in frozen Iranian oil revenue to the Islamic Republic. <sighs> This matches or exceeds adjusted for inflation, the money the U.S. gave Europe under the Marshall Plan after World War II, Land continued, which enabled 17 countries that received such aid to usher in a generation of economic prosperity arising out of the ashes and ruins of World War II. Imagine all that money going to just one country, as it will in Iran's case. We're giving huge amounts of financial resources to the country that shouts death to America and death to Israel, a country that has served as the foremost financial banker for terrorism around the world for nearly two generations. Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khomeini has tweeted that Israel has no cure but to be annihilated. What evidence is there to make the world think that the Iranian mullahs will change their ways. The deal will enable Iran to bankroll terrorism and to kill Americans, other innocent people around the world at unprecedented levels. With shepherds like President Obama and Secretary Kerry looking out for us, who needs wolves? Lynn also cited a separate Lifeway research study that found that evangelicals see a close tie between God and Israel. According to the survey repo reported by Charisma News, Seven in 10, that 69%, say the modern nation of Israel was formed as a result of biblical prophecy. A similar number, 70%, say God has a special relationship with the modern nation of Israel. And nearly three fourths of evangelicals, 73%, say events in Israel are part of the prophecies in the book of Revelation. With evangelical support of Israel continuing, Land said the nation must not become bogged down with Semitics, but rather view the bigger picture of the danger the Iran deal poses for Israel. The U.S. has sealed a deal with an Iranian regime that explicitly threatens to destroy Israel and has refused to acknowledge Israel's right to exist, he said. The last time threats like these were made against the Jews, the world ignored them with catastrophic consequences. The Iranian deal poses an existential threat to the Jewish people in the Israeli state, Lynn continued, denying and ignoring reality by focusing on semantics does not make that ugly and stark reality disappear. America is risking the wrath of God on our nation when we make deals with those who want to wipe Israel from the face of the earth. As the great German Christian and martyr Dietrich Bonhoeffer reminds us, silence in the, the face of evil is itself evil. 
God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. You know, that's a word to every Christian out there. This is the time to act. This is the time to speak. Or God will hold us accountable. We're not going to get a second chance on this one, I don't no, think. No, we're not. We're not. Um, Mother and I watched a movie this weekend. Excellent movie. An excellent, excellent movie. And we're going to encourage everybody out there to watch this movie. It's called Woman in Gold with Helen Marin. And Woman in Gold is a piece of artwork. Helen Marin plays the part of a, a woman who has survived the Holocaust. It is now 1998. And it is getting their family art back. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing, amazing story. But I tell you, as uh, she, they had lived in um, Austria. Mm -hmm. Austria, when Hitler arrived, smiled, cheered, and threw flowers at him. They were so happy. They received him. They received Hitler with welcome arms. Overnight, 24 hours, the Jews were being persecuted. Mm -hmm. Overnight mm -hmm. in Vienna. Yeah. And this is where she as a young girl was, and she was forced to leave her parents behind. You must see this movie. I have never, with all of the Holocaust stuff that I've watched, I have never seen anything who made me, that made me realize how terrifying it had to have been to be a Jewish person anywhere in Europe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Because... People who were your friends one second turned against you immediately. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even safe for you to walk down the street. That's right. You must see this movie. It's called Woman in Gold. You will not be disappointed. That's right. And if you are, I'll be shocked. <laughs> well, you know, it's hot everywhere in the United States, but it's really hot in Israel, too. This is from ICEJ. Scalding hot weather hits Israel. A large forest fire was threatening suburbs of Jerusalem on Monday in the midst of one of the most intense heat waves to hit Israel in years. Dozens of families in Moshav, Evan Zapir, and the Ein Karim neighborhood near Hadassah University Medical Center were evacuated due, due to the fires, which officials said was mostly contained by Monday morning. Smaller brush fires were reported in other areas throughout Israel, as temperatures hit record highs and forecasters warned that there would be little relief before the end of the current week. Amy, you want to pick that up there? The Israel Electric Company also warned of the risk of blackouts as electricity use hit all-time record highs. Searing temperatures also affected Israel's neighbors, including Jordan, where the capital of Amman was covered Sunday in a massive dust storm. And then over in Egypt, Egyptian security forces announced on Saturday that they had killed Salim Sulaim Al-Haram, a senior member of the Islamic State Terror Militia's Sinai Province franchise, in a raid on his home in Sheikh Zuid in the northern Sinai near the Israeli border. The raid came after several weeks of intense clashes between security forces and Islamic State, in which dozens of people were killed on both sides, as well as several civilians. Egypt has asked for and received various kinds of assistance from allies, including resumed shipments of heavy weapons and other equipment from the U.S., as well as money, intelligence, and other forms of assistance from Arab governments, especially Saudi Arabia. Well, going to sports, a friendly soccer match between Israeli club Nashdod and a club in Sofia in um, Bulgaria Monday morning was canceled following a near riot by angry fans who stormed the field throwing beer bottles and punches at Israeli players. The fans, many belonging to a group called Sector G, is known for violent outbursts. On a brighter note, Israeli athletes proudly took part in the closing ceremonies of the 2015 Special Olympics World Games in Los Angeles just yesterday on Sunday after accumulating 61 medals in the competition, including 25 golds, 18 silvers, and 18 bronzes. Finally, Israel's national baseball team took third place trophy in the European Championship Tournament in Vienna over the weekend. 
And U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry was in Qatar on Monday as part of a regional tour of Washington's Arab allies with the aim of reassuring them about the recent joint comprehensive plan of action regarding Iran's renegade nuclear program, as well as discussing regional issues such as the battle against the Islamic State terror militia and other issues related to the increasingly complicated war in Syria. Speaking to reporters in Cairo on Sunday, Kerry declared that there can be absolutely no question that if the Vienna plan is fully implemented, it will make Egypt and all the countries of this region safer than they otherwise would be or were. In a dramatic development of the ongoing multidimensional war in Syria, the U.S. announced on Sunday that it will begin tar targeting any forces which attack the rebel faction it supports in the conflict including loyalists of the Assad regime. The announcement came after U.S. trained and supported factions were deployed in northern Syria Friday with the intent that they fight the Islamic State terror militia. But they quickly came under attack by rival rebel factions, necessitating U.S. airstrikes and leading to a re-evaluation of Washington's plan. Meanwhile, the Assad regime, assisted by forces from the Le Lebanese Shiite terror militia Hezbollah took back some ground from rebel and jihadist factions in fierce fighting around central Hama province over the weekend. Elsewhere, the war within a war between Turkey and the Kurdish PKK faction also intensified in northern Iraq over the weekend, with both sides taking heavy casualties as Turkey also struck Islamic State in Syria. In a related regional development, reports out of the southern Yemeni city of Aden indicate that the Saudi-led coalition of Sunni Arab countries has landed a large force of ground troops supported by tanks and other heavy weapons. The force, estimated up to over 3,000 troops, was landed following recent gains by Sunni factions in Yemen battling Iranian-backed Shiite Houthi rebel groups. Oh, my. Oh, la, 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 la. I think that's kind of right about things really heating up. Really? Too many articles in one day to, to choose. And uh, it is, has really heated up in Israel. There have been multiple attacks um, all over Israel. Well, let's, let's at least kick off this next article. All right. And from the ICEJ, two rockets fired from the hamas ruled Gaza Strip landed in southern Israel Saturday evening in a development believed to be related to clashes between Palestinians and Israelis in the West Bank and Jerusalem, fueled by an arson attack Friday morning on the home of a Palestinian family in the village of Duma, which resulted in the death of an 18-month-old child and the severe wounding of his parents and older brother. Following news of the attack, Jewish communities and motorists in the West Bank were shot at and targeted by special ar suspected arsonists, leading to clashes with security forces in which two Palestinian youths died and several others were wounded. Palest Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas ordered the Western-trained Palestinian police to move to prevent further clashes while also declaring his intention to bring Israel up on charges at the International Criminal Court over last Friday's attack. Israeli officials have universally condemned the attack. You know, I also uh, saw very briefly, just before I ran over here to do this, uh, Hamas launched their 25,000-member 25, youth camp. And I saw a video from the AFP on that. You could probably find that online pretty easy. But let me tell you, it looks like these guys are not only training for war, but you know what? They're jumping out of tunnels and running for hiding, and it's just all kinds of stuff going on. So, yeah. Be uh, praying for the peace of pray, Jerusalem. Amen. And pray for our troops over in the Middle East. The temperature over there is unreal, and uh, they have to wear all that uniform and their backpacks and protective gear. It's unbearable. Pray for them. We love you. We'll see you next time.